Hello, my name is Janine Schaffrano, and today I will be discussing an article from the March-April 2021 issue of the Journal of the American Society of Cytopathology called Cytologic Interpretation of P16 Immunohistochemistry in Head and Neck Carcinomas. Does the choice of fixative matter? I am a pathologist in New Jersey, and I have nothing to disclose. The objectives of today's talk are to discuss the role of P16 as a surrogate marker for high-risk HPV, review criteria for what's considered HPV positive or P16 positive, discuss fixatives for FNA needle rinses and how they impact immunohistochemistry staining, and analyze the study uh, that was in the paper, their results for P16 staining when their institution switched to formalin from cytolite for their needle rinses. Some introductory remarks. The initial diagnosis of oral pharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma is often made from a nodal metastasis diagnosed on an FNA specimen. In the workup of these cases, HPV status is important, having both prognostic and therapeutic implications. Immunohistochemistry for P16 is used as the surrogate marker for high-risk HPV infection, as it is widely available, relatively inexpensive, and easy to perform and interpret. For cytology specimens, immunohistochemistry or IHC is performed on cell block material created from FNA needle rinses. And unlike surgical material where P16 positivity is clearly defined, no such criteria exists for cytology specimens. On surgical material, nuclear and cytoplasmic reactivity in at least 70% of tumor cells is required in order to be called P16 positive. Also, the interpretation of P16 staining can be limited by a lack of tumor cellularity and poor cellular preservation in cytology cell block material. In the study's uh, cytology laboratory, the fixative used for FNA needle rinses and cell blocks was switched from cytolite, which is a methanol-based buffered preservative, to 10% buffered formalin. This was prompted as uh, they had a number of false negative P16 results that were, had been reported on cytology specimens that had been discovered when the, the surgically obtained tissue from those same patients was tested and subsequently P16 positive. Now, in general, cytolite is known to reduce expression of several commonly used antibodies, uh, such as CTF1, S100, synaptoficin, and MIB1, so not kind of impossible that P16 could also be added to this list. The study for this paper investigated the impact of fixative solution on the staining characteristics of P16 in cell block material and the associated interpretation and accuracy of P6 reporting for cytology cases. Thomas Jefferson uh, University is where this study took place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was IRB approved and they performed a database search to identify FNA specimens from head and neck lesions for which P16 staining had been performed on cell block material one year before and one year after the implementation of formalin instead of cytolite. The P16 status of each case had been previously reported as positive, negative, or equivocal in the cytology report. And then they wanted cases that had a subsequent tissue specimen, either a biopsy or a resection, uh, on which P16 testing had been performed. Uh, in that case, it was formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissue um, from either a primary tumor or a lymph node met. And these were the cases that were included in the study. For each case, retrospective analysis was performed by two board certified cytopathologists who were blinded to the P16 status and the tissue diagnosis. They independently scored the percentage of tumor cells displaying nuclear and cytoplasmic P16 expression they noted the staining intensity for both nuclear and cytoplasmic expression and documented it as weak, moderate, or strong. They also noted whether or not there was a necrotic background and whether or not there was a intact tissue fragment, at least one. And that was defined as a cohesive cluster of 20 or more viable tumor cells. The average nuclear and cytoplasmic percentages for each case were calculated and compared to the previously assigned P16 status in that original cytology report, as well as the P16 status on the subsequent surgical or resection specimen, surgical biopsy or resection specimen. 
Once again, to reiterate, P16 positivity in the formalin fixed tissue of a surgical biopsy or resection specimen is defined as greater than or equal to 70% of tumor cells showing strong nuclear and cytoplasmic staining of moderate to strong intensity. Any cases uh, that had a greater than 10% discordance were reviewed together by both pathologists to identify possible reasons for the discrepancy. There's a lot more info about the statistical analysis uh, within the paper. So for the results, a total of 46 cytology cases were tested for P16 IHC. 24 were from cytolite cell block material and 22 were from formalin. The cytologic and corresponding biopsy and resection specimen diagnoses are listed here. Some form of squamous cell carcinoma, uh, as well as nasopharyngeal carcinoma, as noted. Here are two tables looking at the degree of concordance. So the degree of concordance in interpreted P16 results between the histologically examined tumors and their matched cytologically examined lymph node metastases are shown in these tables. We have 24 cases from cytolite, blocks up here on the top table and 22 for the formalin. Nearly half of the P16 negative cytology, uh, negative cytolite cell block cases were actually false negative results. The level of discordance between the cytologic and histologic results for the cytolox cell block material was statistically significant with a p-value of 0.0039 in comparison to the formalin fixed cell block material that was not significantly, statistically significant, having a p-value of 1.0. So now let's look closer at some of these P16 staining patterns. First up is the true positive cytolite fixed cell block cases. So seven of the total 24 cytolite cases were reported as P16 positive, and they showed 10 to 85% nuclear staining as seen on panels A and B respectively, going from lower to higher, with 35 to 90% cytoplasmic staining as seen in both B and C panels respectively. Cytolate cell blocks cases had a 0% false positive rate with all cytolite cell block P16 positive cases confirmed on their subsequent surgical material. And A goes with D, B with E, and C with F, showing the uh, uh, corresponding surgical material. Next, we're looking at the P16 patterns in the false negative cytolite cell block cases. So these were nearly half of the P16 cytolite cell blocks. They were false negative. They showed zero to 10% nuclear staining, such as in panels A and D, and zero to 65% cytoplasmic staining, such as in panels A and C. Panel B is illustrating weak intensity, while C and D are showing stronger intensity of staining. D also highlights uh, some, sometimes what they saw, which were isolated tumor cells without any intact tissue fragments. The subsequent surgical material is noted in the right panel that goes along with the tissue sample from the left. So you can see all nicely P16 positive, no question. There were two equivocal cytolite cell block cases that were subsequently positive on their surgical material. They showed patchy nuclear staining in less than 10% of cells with a range of 15 to 80% of cytoplasmic blush. Panel A here is showing 5% patchy moderate nuclear staining with about 15% weak cytoplasmic. And C is the corresponding histology section showing nice positivity. To just summarize the cytolite, fixed cell blocks. We had 15 of 24 that showed an acrotic background, five of which were false negative, five true positive, and five true negatives. 
and five cases had both necrosis and lacked intact cell fragments. Now let's look at the formalin fixed cell blocks. 15 of the 22 were P16 positive and were confirmed on surgical material. They had 10 to 100% nuclear staining as seen in panels A and C and 30 to 100% cytoplasmic staining also seen in those panels. All staining was moderate to strong in intensity. And just like in the others, the panels on the right, D, E, and F, are the histology confirmed staining for the cases directly to the left. Here's looking at the formalin cell blocks that were P16 negative, with all six cases showing 0% nuclear and 0% cytoplasmic uh, staining. They were also negative on the surgical specimen, so overall this diagnostic accuracy was 100%. There was one equivocal formalin fixed cell block, and that was due to patchy P16 staining in about 10% of predominantly necrotic tumor cells. This went on to be P16 positive on the surgical specimen. So you can see in panel B, uh, about 10% strong nuclear staining, 80% moderate cytoplasmic and some isolated tumor cells, but then panel D showing the corresponding strongly positive P16 uh, staining. To just summarize some additional findings in the formalin fixed cell blocks, six additional cases had necrotic background, three of which were true positive and three true negative. Five of these lacked intact cell fragments and four of which of those were necrotic. Staining intensity for these cases was, consi was consistent for the formalin fixed cell blocks. P16 positive cases, they showed moderate or strong staining of both the nuclear and cytoplasmic components. Uh, the cytolite fixed material, on the other hand, though, was a little more variable, mainly differing for the negative and equivocal cases by the percentage of staining. This is illustrated in these graphs below, blue representing cytolite fixed cases and orange the formalin fixed. In regards to inter-observer concordance, it was perfect for all the P16 negative cases that were formalin fixed but inter-observer discordance of greater than 10% was noted in more of the cytolite fixed cell blocks in comparison, as listed here. You can see uh, about 25% for nuclear compared to 9.1 and 33.3% cytoplasmic compared to 13.6. The top graphs show improved inter-observer agreement for the formalin cell block group as demonstrated by the scatter plots of the two pathologist quantitative scores. And I believe, so cytolite is orange and the formalin is blue. And for, uh, it shows a larger vertical distance from the diagonal line for the cytolite fixed cases, that's the orange, in comparison to the formalin fixed cases. So the blue tend to be closer to the diagonal line. The bottom graphs are Bland-Altman plots that show tighter clustering of the difference in pathologist assessments compared with the uh, cytolite uh, cell block group. So here, the actual colors are flipped. Formalin is orange and cytolite is blue. And you can see that the formalin ones tend to be a little, uh, are clustered together more. The intraclass correlation coefficient for the formalin cell block group is much higher than those for the cytolite fixed group as listed in the table, allowing the formalin group to be classified as excellent agreement and the cytolite group as good agreement. Here lists descriptive character, uh, descriptive statistics regarding the differences in the two pathologist quantitative scores. Overall, there was improved consistency in both nuclear and cytoplasmic scores using formalin, leading to the cytolite cell block group having a standard deviation that was two times higher for cytoplasmic scores and three times greater for nuclear scores when comparing to the formalin cell block group. 
Overall, this study demonstrated that cytolite fixed cell block material from histologically verified P16 positive lesions showed weaker cytoplasmic staining and weaker and more focal nuclear staining patterns with P16 compared to formalin fixed specimens. The formalin fixed specimens yielded more diffuse and intense staining of both nuclear and cytoplasmic uh, compartments. And overall, as a result, there was improved accuracy of P16 IHC interpretation and better inner observer concordance with formal fixation. The lack of formal guidelines for P16 interpretation in cytology specimens leads to variability among pathologists and across institutions. Several studies have tried to address this with different conclusions, as listed here. But the unifying point is that the threshold for P16 positivity in cytology specimens should be lower than that of surgical specimens in order to limit false negative cytology results. A caveat for these uh, studies listed here is they only used one type of fixative solution, which was not the same for all these studies It varied. A recent prospective uh, study utilized cytolite and formal and fix fixatives for sequential FNA passes of nodal METs and confirming the results of this study that formal fixation drastically improved the interpretation of P16 staining. In comparing the staining patterns, it's likely due that alcohol-based fixatives like cytolite have a denaturing action on protein, unlike formalin, which produces intramolecular and intermolecular cross-linking. Interestingly, the changes caused by alcohol fixation are considered irreversible, as demonstrated by Wang et al., that showed the same changes with immunostains, even um, if, the plate, if the specimens were subsequently placed in formalin. So if they were initially collected in cytolite, those changes happened and were irreversible, even though they subsequently put it in formalin. When reviewing the cases with greater than 10% discordance, the study found that most discordance occurred within the cytolite fix group. Limited overall cellularity was an issue, but even specimens with numerous intact tissue fragments were difficult to analyze because of heterogeneous staining among those fragments. Blush staining, especially in the cytoplasm, was a common occurrence in the cytolite box. This can be subjective as some may consider it a true, just weak positive, while others may lead to calling it negative. And this not only causes intra-observer variability, but even intra-observer variability. Necrotic tumor cells uh, tend to, sorry, tend to uh, stain weakly, but not specifically for P16. So it's really important to limit interpretation of staining to viable tumor cell clusters. Some limitations of the study were discussed in the paper. And that included that since it was a retrospective analysis, paired samples were not utilized for prospective testing. I think this study was, and I what they commented on as well, was more reflective of everyday specimen collection and processing, uh, which limited the potential for bias associated with the deliberate collection for research purposes. Another potential limitation is that variables may have been different in the lab when you know one year prior versus one year after, but you know, most of these variables stay pretty common and steady in the lab and their protocols didn't change, their material supply was stable, so would, should not have affected their results. Their sample size was small, uh, so more extensive studies should be performed. And lastly, having different sample sources, uh, such as cytology from a lymph node met, and then the primary, uh, which might be a mucosal site, it's really inevitable with FNA material and cytology. Uh, you're not gonna perform an FNA at a primary mucosal site uh, for the head and neck, um, but you will for the, the lymph node. Uh, overall, in their study, P16 staining at those nodal MET sites, when compared to the mucosal site, showed the same strong and diffuse staining pattern when one positive. In conclusion, the choice of fixative does affect the accuracy of P16 staining in cytology specimens. Formal fixation should be used for head and neck specimens that may require P16 testing, improving not only the accuracy of interpretation, but then also translating into better patient care. In the end, whatever fixative is used, you just have to have clear criteria 
that undergoes validation for what gives a positive P16 result. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.